Welcome back to the Boa Morph Guide. <laughs> Today I have with me a very special snake. His name is Selkuth, and he's actually the first snake that I've ever... No, he's the first boa <laughs> that I ever purchased. I got him from Tails and Scales in 2014, and that makes him eight years old. So those of you that are looking for a boa and worried about them getting too big, there's an eight-year-old boy for you. And the first thing that we're gonna address is that Hog Island boas are not actually a morph. They're a locality. But I figured we'd talk about them anyways. So the difference between localities and morphs is that a locality is from a certain place. And if you take a locality and you breed it to anything else, so if I take Selkuth and I breed him to anything that is not a Hog Island, then the babies and their forward, we will never have a pure hog island again. Whereas if you take an albino, breed it to anything, so you could take an albino, breed it to Selkuth, then take the babies, breed them to each other, or breed them to an albino, and they'll make more albinos. So there's no such thing as like percentages in albinos. Kind of like if you think about super dwarf retics. Once you have 100% and you breed it to anything, it'll never be 100% again. So with the Hog Islands, people like to get pure ones, and he's a pure one from back in the day. Usually you can get these for around $250, $300 here in Canada, and they make wonderful pets. They're very good sized boas that aren't too big. They have a beautiful color that's kind of like peachy, gray, and something that really kind of stands out with Hog Islands is at nighttime they get really bright. But this is something that I noticed kind of happens with all reptiles. And I think that at nighttime they don't need to absorb the uh, sun and get the heat. So at nighttime they just, they turn a bit brighter. So you might notice if you look at your reptiles at night, they're going to look different and you're like, did something change? And that's what it is. The only downside to it is at nighttime they look wonderful, but you don't have the sunlight to light them up and show everyone. What are you waiting for? Do it! Just do it! Yes, you can! Just do it! So Hog Island boas are also known as a dwarf species of boa. They don't get as big as your regular BCIs and definitely not as big as your BCCs. As you can see, he stayed pretty small. And if you do overfeed these snakes, they'll end up getting pretty big too. They can get probably about as big as a BCI if they're pushed, but I don't like to push any of my animals. I think that animals are a little bit healthier if they're left a touch hungry. Kind of like us. <laughs> I know when I eat too much, I don't feel that good, so I don't want to make my snakes feel like that either. And often when you look at snakes in the wild, they are quite lean. Mind you, sometimes they don't have enough food, so because we have access to food, we do want to, you know, make sure our animals are fed well. But I really like to kind of go with looking at the body, seeing what it's like, and feeding it accordingly sometimes feeding them a little bit more, sometimes feeding them a little bit less. Just like in the wild, they have different seasons, so they'll have times of the year where they get a lot more food and times of the year where they get a lot less. <laughs> Are you thinking about getting your first snake? Or do you have any experience with hog islands? Even though I've had Selkuth for eight years, I never really felt the need to breed them. I don't really want to get another hog island and make pure hog islands. My breeding plans in the future with this guy is to make hog island ghosts because ghosts are really nice and bright, but they end up getting a little bit darker or browning out or changing with age. But when you add hog island to them, it makes them really clean, bright and beautiful. So that's kind of my little project in the future that we'll be working on in a few years. When it comes to boa breeding, I've slowed down a bit because I don't want to overproduce animals. I want to keep it, my collection smaller and really focus on taking better care of the animals and producing less quantity and more quality and just having enough animals that I can deal with and still kind of enjoy life 
on my own without having to always be cleaning. Lots of uh, people, as they become more successful, they want to breed more and more. And more. I'd rather just breed less, charge a little bit more, and not turn it into a puppy mill type of thing. <laughs> I'm more of like a morph person than a locality person. And originally when I got Selkuth, I was planning to breed him with Sophie and make some albinos. But the way that the recessive gene works is a little bit different. So it wouldn't have done what I thought it would do. I hope you enjoyed meeting Selkuth. And if you want to learn more about boa genetics, I have a whole playlist and another playlist just about boas in general. Please smash the like button as it helps the YouTube algorithm. <laughs> Leave me a comment. If you want to learn about recessive genes, watch the video I'm putting up now.